Okay, the, the teaching I'm doing, this is the fifth Tuesday. This is the last Tuesday. But I've been teaching, does God still heal? And a lot of times we don't understand why he doesn't. If, if a person is a Christian and Christians are praying for him, okay, well, why didn't you heal them, Lord? So I've been shown biblically why sometimes he heals and sometimes he doesn't. Um, the last part, I'm going to teach on the gift of healing. There is a gift of healing. To, to get the gift of healing, you have to have faith. You have to have faith that, that, that God does heal. Also, the, the gift comes by hearing from God. Like I said before, you don't go and lay hands on somebody or anoint them with or whatever and pray for them to get healed. I mean, you can pray for their healing, but you can't say, you can't go up and tell them you're healed in the name of Jesus. You can't do that unless the Lord tells you. That's the gift of healing. You don't just do it because, well, I know the, heart heal, the Lord heals, and then you go lay hands on someone and, and say, I command you in the name of Jesus, be healed, stuff like the way they do that sometimes. Well, we can't command nothing unless the Lord tells us to. Romans ten seventeen, it says, Then by faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. So we've got to hear from the Lord. Now we can pray that, you know, we pray for a, that they would get healed. And 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse uh, 6 and 9, it says, And there are different operations, but the same God which worketh all in all. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit all. For to one is given by the Spirit of the word of wisdom, to another the word of knowledge by the same Spirit, to another faith by the same Spirit, and to another the gifts of healing by the same Spirit. Now this word of knowledge is what I was talking about just now. The Lord gives you a word to go lay hands or whatever. To heal someone. The Lord gives you a word. He gives you the word of wisdom. Well, not the word of wisdom. That's different. He gives you a word of knowledge. And when he tells you that, then, then you go lay hands. Just like it says in Romans, what I just read. Faith comes by hearing. Hearing God. Faith comes by hearing Him. So when, he, when you hear Him and He tells you to do something, then that's when you can do it with authority, with, 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 uh, with power. Okay? And if you drop down to verse 28, and God has set some in the church, first apostles, secondarily prophets, thirdly teachers, after that miracles, then gifts of healings, helps, governments, and different, uh, different kind of tongues. Now these, these gifts here are in the church. These are gifts of the church, it says. Has, God has set some in the church. So we're talking about the church here. And then verse 30, have all the gift of healings? Do all speak with tongues? Do all interpret? Of course, the answer is no to that. Just like it says in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, we are one body, but many parts. The foot needs the hand, or the ear needs the eye, but not everyone can be the ear, and because, because then we couldn't see. If everybody was the ear, we, then we wouldn't have eyes. Not everyone can be the hand because then we couldn't walk because nobody's going to be the feet. So there's many parts in the church that makes the body. Not, not the whole church, like I said, is the hand or the, the eyes, the ear. We're all separate. These gifts are for the church. Remember that. Some are apostles, prophets, and so on. But in the church, no one has all of the gifts. No one has just one, one of these gifts. It says gifts... <coughs> Because we never know when we might have to use one of, the, one of them to help someone. Now before I go on, let me, about prophecy. We have many churches today that don't believe in prophecy anymore. That was just back, for back then. Uh, that's, it's true. Well, no. Let me put it this way. It's not true because it does happen today. As far as foretelling the future... That's already been done. Okay, we, the Lord's already prophesied everything that's going to happen. So no, that's, we don't have that anymore. But the Lord does still use men with a, with, a word of God, with a word from Him, a special word from the Lord, to speak to us. That still goes on today. 
Because in First Corinthians chapter 14, verse 3, But he that prophesieth speaketh unto men to edification, exhortation, and comfort. Prophets are now used to help others to grow, to become strong in the Lord. That's what prophets do, by giving them the word of God. So we still have prophets. Not the kind, like I said, not the kind that say this is going to happen because all that's already been done. But we, prophecy is to help people with the word of God. Now back to verse 28. God says these gifts are for the church. And who is the church? We are. Christians. Christians are the church. Not the building. The building is just the building. Made of material, brick, wood, whatever. That's, that's just material stuff. The church is Christians. Christians make the church. And when we are outside the church and we're not in a group, we're not in, in a, a group of Christians, a, a church, and God, and God wants to use a gift, then he can use us. Because, okay, if someone out there, well, just say you're in another country, and God wanted to use you to witness to somebody because he wants this person to hear the word of God. Well, just like the day of Pentecost, the Lord gave the disciples different tongues. They spoke in different languages. Okay, that's, that's one kind of tongues. There's different kind of tongues in the Bible, but we won't get into that. But that is one, one kind of tongues where you speak into another language. Well, that, that's, a, that's a gift he still uses today. If we're somewhere in another country and he wants this person to, uh, to hear his word, he could give you the, tongue, the gift of speaking in tongues speaking in another language to witness to this person if someone was sick and God wanted to heal him just say okay I see a car accident I stop someone's bleeding to death or whatever they're badly hurt and God wants to heal this person he wants to heal him right then and there because he can do that he can do whatever he wants mm -hmm. and he says Jesse he, now he's telling me I'm getting a word of knowledge he's saying Jesse go lay hands on him I'm going to heal that person well, I go lay hands on them. God heals them. God heals them, not Jesse. Well, does that mean I have the gift of healing? No. He gave it to me at that moment for that one time. So not, no one man has a gift to go around healing people. God uses, when you're outside the church, whatever gift he needs for you to use when you're outside the church, all these gifts we're talking about, he can use us for them. Now, we're, when we're in the church, then we got different, you know, different persons have different gifts. But when we're outside of church, remember that. When you're outside of the church, then you are the church. So if you need a gift of healing, it's you. You need a gift of tongues, it's you. Prophecy, it's you. Okay? I hope you understand that. Now, we have men today in the churches, and you see it on TV. And they're even called by name that this man has the gift of healing. This is totally against the scriptures. Like I said before, not one, not one man has a gift of healing. Healing only comes from the Word of God. These gifts are given for that moment, like I said. Now, you might, maybe, might use it again. I mean, if I get in another situation and God sees, well, I want to heal that person, He might use me again. But then you might be a person that you never get that gift because you've never been in the situation. You, you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. So... How he uses you outside of church, he may and he may not. So gifts are used when they need to be used. Not, not uh, because one man says, the Lord gave me the gift of healing. Right. Okay. Now healing comes without medicine or doctors or any kind of man's help. It is healing totally done by God. We're talking about the gift. When the Lord heals, when the Lord heals someone, a divine healing is not done by medicines, it's not done by a doctor, it's not done by anything man does. This is divine healing. Now you have healings that doctors can do, that medicines can help. These are healings, but these are not divine healings. Divine healings, which I've said before, divine healing comes from the Lord, and when you're healed, you're healed right then and there, and you're healed completely from whatever it is he healed you from. In the book of Acts, Luke, now Luke was known as the physician in, in the, in the, as one of the 12 disciples. 
he was known as the doctor. And he was traveling with Paul. And together they had a shipwreck. And in chapter 28 of Acts, it says, I'm going to read this out of the Living Bible. It's easier to understand. And I'm going to read the whole uh, 10 verses. Once we were safe on shore, we learned that we were on the island of Malta. The people of the island were very kind to us. It was cold and rainy, so they built a fire on the shore to welcome us. As Paul gathered an armful of sticks and was laying them on the fire, a poisonous snake, driven out by the heat, bit him on the hand. The people of the island saw it hanging from his hand and said to each other, A murderer, no doubt. Though he escaped the sea, justice will not permit him to live. Now, this is what the people on the island were saying. Because the snake bit him and they thought, well, if the snake bites you, he must have did something wrong. And that's why they called him a murderer. In verse 5, Paul shook off the snake into the fire and was unharmed. The people waited for him to swell up or suddenly drop dead. Remember, it's a poisonous snake. But when they had waited a long time and saw that he wasn't harmed, they changed their minds and decided that he was a god. Near the shore where he was land, landed was an estate belonging to Poblius, the chief official of the island. He welcomed us and treated us kindly for, for three days. And it happened, Poblius' father was ill with fever. Paul went in and prayed for him, and laying his hands on him, he healed him. Then all the other peop sick people on the island came and were healed. As a result, were showed with honors, with honors, and when the time came to sell, people supplied us with everything we would need for the trip. The reason I read this is, is Paul lays hand on them, and they were healed. Now, like I said, Luke, the book of Luke, Luke in the Bible, he is a doctor. He was he was a physician, but nowhere in here, nowhere in this chapter, did it say Luke. Luke used his medical know-how. All these people that were being healed by Paul, it was being, they were being healed by the Lord, not by medical stuff, not, not even by this Dr. Luke. Okay, We need to see that. The Lord was doing the healing. God gave Paul the gifts of healing these people. And by the way, they treated him when they left by giving them everything they needed for the trip. I would say they came to believe in the God of Paul. Okay, they had their own small g little God they believed in, but the time Paul left, they believed in the God of Paul. They believed in Jehovah God because of the healing and what, what the gifts he was using. Okay, but mainly what I want to show here, the doctor was with him. Dr. Luke was with him. We don't call him Dr. Luke, but Luke was a doctor. But nowhere in this chapter, nowhere in this book, did he say that he used his medical know-how to heal these people? Paul did it all by the gifts of healing that the Lord had given him. And let me say this real quickly, that the book of Acts has not ended. I believe I said this before. We're still living the book of Acts. It will be until the rapture when the book of Acts ends. Because right now the book, is, the book of Acts is, is the time of grace. It's the time that the Lord is using us. We have the power of the Holy Spirit. Everything the disciples did, we can do also. So we're still living in the book of Acts. And this is, like I said, it's not going to end until the rapture comes. This is the way the church should be. We should be like the disciples. I've taught on many different things. and We should be like the disciples. Going out, telling people about the Lord. And doing miracles. Doing healings. Okay, that's the way we. That's the way it should be today. Another place of the gift of healing was given in Matthew's chapter ten, verses five through eight. It says, "These twelve Jesus sent forth and commanded them, saying, Go not into the way of the Gentiles, and into any city of the Samaritans enter ye not, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And as ye go, preach, saying." The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Heal the sick, cleanse the leper, raise the dead, cast out devils. Freely ye have received, freely give. He first sent his disciples 
to the Jews to preach about the kingdom of heaven. But if you have been, if they would have told a Gentile or a Samaritan this, they wouldn't have had a clue what they were talking about. Because the Jews, like, the Jews believe in God. Remember, they believe in God. They just didn't accept Jesus. He sent them with the gift of prophecy and the gift of healing. And the reason I say gift, because they didn't say to pray for healing, it said to heal the sick. There's a difference. When the Lord tells you to do something, you don't need to go, okay, well, well let me pray about it. No, if the Lord tells you do this or do that, you don't go and then pray about it. Okay, let me see if this is what the Lord wants me to do when he just told you to do it. So there's just not praying here. He said, go and heal the sick. So they had the power to go lay hands and heal the sick at this time. <clears throat> These are people who say that God healed them, but then it came back. People who, who were healed, but then they said their sickness or whatever it is came back. Well, if it came back, it wasn't from God. People who say that. People who say they were healed, but then it came back. That was not a healing from God. When, when God heals, he heals. All right. Because it says in James chapter 1, verse 17, Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and cometh down from the Father of lights, with whom is no variance, neither shadow of turning. If someone lays hands on you, or however they do it, and it comes back, the healing wasn't from God, because His healings is perfect. That's what it says right here. His healings are perfect. It says His gift, his gift never changes. And when He does it, it doesn't get unhealed. Okay, James 1.17 plainly says his healings are perfect. Whatever the gift is, if the gift of healing, his healing is perfect. There is healing that is not from God, but from the devil. In, chapter, in John chapter 10, the people are arguing with some, with some who are saying Jesus is the Messiah and others are saying no, he's not. And in verses 11 through 17, Jesus is saying that he is the true shepherd and watches over his sheep. But there is a false shepherd who leaves when one of the sheep are in trouble. That's when you can tell the difference between a true man of God, a shepherd, a true man of God, and someone who is a false preacher, teacher, a false shepherd, because when trouble comes, they leave. Where the Lord... He never leaves us, and we know that. Mm -hmm. And because of this, it says in John chapter 10, verses 19 through 21, there was a division, therefore, again among the Jews for these sayings. And many of them said, He hath a devil and is mad. Why hear ye him? Others said, These are not the words of him that hath a devil. Can a devil open the eyes of the blind? Now, the devil is being called a shepherd. He looks like, talks like, and acts like Jesus. He even does miracles. Remember that. But he's not Jesus. Remember when Moses went to Pharaoh, and he threw his staff down and turned to a snake, and the sorcerers there, they did the same thing, and their, their staffs turned into a snake? So, yes, the devil can, can also uh, do miracles, but they're counterfeit. They're counterfeit miracles. And by the way, whose snake ate the other snakes? God's, God's snake ate the other snakes. They were, they were just counterfeit. Whatever the devil does, and it looks like Jesus, but it's from the devil, it's just a counterfeit and it doesn't work. It just looks. In verse 21, it doesn't say, these are not the miracles of him. It says, the words. These are not the, verse 21, these are not the words of him, is what it says. Jesus said, I and my Father are one. Can the devil say that? So he's, they're saying up there, these are the words of him. So the words, Jesus says, the devil, can, the devil cannot say, the Father and I are one. So God's words are more powerful than, 
than w what Satan can throw out there. Like I said before, signs and wonders will lead you astray. Just like these sorcerers who threw their staffs down and they turned into snakes, you would think, you know, that's a miracle from God, but it was from the devil. So we need to watch out for signs and wonders. And you can't listen to all these preachers out there who, who say they have to give the healing because they show signs and wonders also. Well, a lot of their signs and wonders are not from the Lord. And as we know, a lot of stuff you see on TV or, you, or these churches you might go to, especially if they're real big, because that's mainly where the false preachers are. That's why they're so big. Just because a church is big does not mean it's a church of God. We had uh, my, my birth mother. Her name was Cruz. She went to one of these big churches where they were doing healings. They had a man who was doing healings. And so she went up there and she, he said she was healed from her diabetes and she was taking medicine for her eyesight because that's where the diabetes was affecting her. Well, she got off her medicine because this preacher, this man who said he had the gift of healing, said she no longer, no longer had diabetes. So she got off her medicine and she almost lost her eyesight. So we got to be very, very careful who we listen to. Remember, these preachers that you see on TV, especially on the 24-hour Christian station, TBN or whatever it's called, I advise Christians not to watch it because I, from me watching it and learning from them, I could say about half of what's on that station is wolves. They're always asking for money. Men of God don't ask for money. money. Men of God do not ask for money. If they want to build this building or, or add to this or that, they're asking for money. Well, if God wanted them to have that, God would give it to them. But not only that, also like this healing that we're talking about, you got to be very careful. Remember, these wolves, they look like Christians, preachers. They talk like them. They act like them, but they're wolves. They're after your money. They're after glory for themselves, not for the Lord. So we got to be real careful on who we listen to. Always, always, when they give you the scriptures, don't just take it for granted that they know what they're talking about. Always check them out and make sure the scriptures they gave you wasn't, wasn't taken out of context. Because many of them do that. Now, when I said that when the Lord heals, He heals completely and it doesn't come back, I'm not saying that if you get the flu... When the Lord heals you from the flu, doesn't mean next winter you're not going to get the flu, okay? I'm not saying that. It doesn't mean you'll never catch the flu again. Or like Lazarus, when, when Jesus raised him from the dead, it didn't mean he was never going to die when he raised him from the dead, okay? Jesus, Lazarus was raised from the dead. He wasn't resurrected, okay, like Jesus. He was just raised from the dead. And he did die again. I'm talking about if you have like bone cancer, and God heals you from your bone cancer, it's not coming back. But if you get lung cancer, that's not bone cancer. You could catch lung cancer later. So I hope you understand what I'm saying. When I say whatever he heals you from, it's not coming back. But it might be something else that comes back, but not the same. But it's not going to be whatever he healed you from, you are healed from that. John 5.14 Afterwards, Jesus found him in the temple and said unto him, Behold, thou art made whole. Sin no more, lest a worse thing come upon thee. We're not going to get a complete healing of our bodies until we go to be with the Lord at the rapture or when it's our time to come. But what he's up here is he's saying, lest a worse thing come on you. He's talking about, when the Lord, let me read that again. Afterwards, Jesus found him in the temple, the, the, the person he healed, and said unto him, Behold, thou art made whole. Sin no more, lest a worse thing come on you. So he told his man, you were made whole, you're healed. When he said sin no more, he wasn't saying like, okay, you're not going to sin no more. He's not talking about being sinless. But he's saying, lest a worse thing. So if you're people who get healed, they're so excited. They're walking with the Lord. They're so excited. They're, they're happy and everything. But then they go back to their old way of living. Yeah. Well, something worse than what the Lord healed you from could, could, could get to you. Not the same thing, but a worse thing. That's what it says. 
So like I said, these bodies, these bodies weren't made to live forever. Not these bodies, the shell that we're in now. These bodies will not live forever. We won't have our complete healing until the rapture or he comes to get us. Remember that God does the healing and it's perfect. That's what it said. It's perfect. Man makes a drug to help and a lot of times it does. The drug does help, but sometimes it doesn't. And also, at the same time, the drug they give you to help this might have a side effect on this, which is worse than what maybe you had before. So, you know, drugs are not perfect. We should not depend on drugs. Right. Only, only, if God doesn't heal you, God, if he doesn't give you a divine healing and you have to go through doctors or medicine, that's fine. But that's not the perfect healing. God is the perfect healing. God is. Because man has made it. Man has made it. And believe me, we don't do anything perfect. Not until we accept Jesus Christ as our Savior. Then he makes us perfect. And I use the word perfect. I'm not saying we're not going to sin anymore or do anything wrong. I'm just saying we're complete when we accept Jesus Christ as our Savior. And we don't have a perfect body yet. These bodies are dying little by little, little by little every day. So we should praise God for when, <clears throat> for when he takes someone. If we're, healing, if we're praying for someone who's sick and is a Christian, brother or sister, and they die, well, really, God did heal them. He healed them better than what we were asking for. We were asking them to heal them so they could stay here. Yeah. But if the Lord took them home, he did a total, complete healing on them. Because now they have a perfect body. Amen? Amen? So we should not get disappointed that oh, God didn't answer my prayer. I mean, they, they died. Well, no, he did answer prayer. He gave them a total healing. Mm -hmm. Now, sometimes we get selfish and we want them here with us. We might get sad if the person leaves. You know, we're going to miss them. We're going to be sad. But we got to remember, if this is a Christian that was, that's gone home to be with the Lord, that's an amen. That's not... Oh, God didn't answer my prayer. Well, be happy God didn't answer your prayer. Because then that person would be healed, but they still be in a dying body. Right. <laughs> you hear what I'm saying? They're still in a dying body. So, uh, if he takes them home, praise God. Like I said, we're going to be sad. We're going to miss them. But praise God. They're in a, they got a total healing. Their body is now perfect. Amen. He's given us the greatest healing of all. He has given us, born again Christians, He has given us the perfect healing. Not going home, I'm talking about salvation. He healed us from being a lost, wicked person. Amen. Now we're still, we're still wicked. We're not lost anymore because we're the Lord's, we found the Lord. But we're still wicked. We're still sinners. All right? But He has given us a healing of, how can I say it? Before we were wicked because that's what we wanted to do and that's the way we were. Now we're wicked, but we look to the Lord to help us to escape from being so wicked. You know, it's by the grace of God that we're not a drug addict. It's by the grace of God that we're not, we're not an alcoholic. It's by His grace we're not that way. Because whatever you see out there that's wicked, that could be us. You never know. You never know. You could take... A person that has everything and you think, well, this person doesn't have need of anything. I mean, they're rich, they have a family, blah, 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 blah. And all of a sudden, out of nowhere, he's a wino and he's lost everything. So don't think that, oh, I could, you know, that would never be me. Oh, yes. It's only by the grace of God that we're not like that. It's not because we're so good, we'll never be like that. No, no, no. Remember. Remember what it says, our righteousness, in God's eyes, our righteousness are as filthy rags. That's what he says. The bottom line, if you want to be a true born-again Christian, Proverbs 3, <clears throat> verses 5 through 12. Trust in the Lord with all thy heart, and lean not unto thy own understanding. Boy, that's something we do not understand. That's something we have a hard time with. Because we want to understand everything that the Lord is doing. Or why he did this, why he did that. But right here it says, Trust in the Lord with all thy heart, and lean not unto thy own understanding. 
In all thy ways, acknowledge him, and he will direct thy paths. We always seem to think that we know better than the Lord. We do. And when you think that that way, you can't totally depend on him. When you think, oh, I think this way is better. When you do that, you can't be totally dependent on God. Because you got self in the way. If things are happening in your life that you don't understand, just depend on the Lord. And he will have everything under control. Even if you don't see it, we have a lot of times we depend on our physical eyes, on what we see for us to understand. Instead of looking at our spiritual eyes. We have spiritual eyes and we need to try to see the Lord that way. We try to figure out, okay, spiritually, this is why this is happening. All right. So we need to remember God's ways are better than ours because he is God. And even if we don't understand why he does this or that, we need to remember, okay, this is God. My ways are not better than his. We need to remember that. Believe me, people, Christians forget that sometimes. If they don't understand something that's going on in their life, right away they get hysterical. Oh, why did God? Why did God do that? Or blah blah or stuff like that. We need to just depend on God that He knows what He's doing. I mean, that's why we made Him our Lord, right? Because He is above all. Isaiah fifty-five eight says, "For my thoughts are not your thoughts." Neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. He will direct your path. Isaiah 55, 8. People who, who are confused and don't understand, read 55, Isaiah 55, 8. For my thoughts, this is God, for my thoughts are not your thoughts. His thinking is a whole lot different from what the way we think. Neither are your ways my ways. So we think it should be done this way. Well, believe me. Without a doubt, God's way will always be read better than our way. Psalms 37, 23. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, and he delighteth in his way. The steps of a good man. That means a righteous man. That means a born-again Christian. Christian. They're ordered by the Lord. So when we're praying for someone, or even in our, li or in our own life, the Lord's directing us. The footsteps are ordered by the Lord. If the Lord decides, hey, I'm ready to take my, my son or my daughter, we're children of God. If he says, I'm ready to take them home, I'm ready to bring them home with us, with me. Well, that's what the, order, the Lord ordered. Their footsteps is to come home, like, like my daughter. The footsteps he, he, he ordered for my daughter was, okay, I'm bringing you home at five years old. You know, that's the Lord's way. Yeah. Just remember what I said at the very beginning of the teaching. That it rains on the just and the unjust. And just means those who are justified. And the unjust, those are mean lost people. The just are the, are the people in righteousness that live for the Lord. And the unjust are people who are lost. They don't have the Lord. Well, he says, I reign on both of them. I reign on both of y'all. He never did. Never did he say in the Bible... Nothing's bad going to happen to you now because you're a born-again Christian. He never said that. It's just that when things happen to us that are, that are hard to take, or it's just we have the Lord to go through whatever it is. We have the Lord to carry us through it. Just like my little girl, five years old, I had the Lord who carried me totally through that time. Now, if I was the unjust, it, it rained on me. My Lord went, my, my Lord... My, my daughter went to heaven. Okay. But being that I was just, God carried me through that time. If I would have been unjust, no telling what would have happened to me. I'd either be a drunk, a drug addict, or maybe even dead. Because that's not easy to take. But the Lord carried me through it, and here I am, teaching His words. Amen. <laughs> so... We need to understand the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, not by us. Well, we want this for this person. Well, okay, you want to be this person's God, or do you want God to be this person's God? Let God order those footsteps, not us. Verse 8, 
it shall be health to thy navel and moral to thy bones. Meaning he will give you rest and peace. Your nerves will be under control. Your nerves will be under control. And it can be also mean <clears throat> it can help with your arthritis because it says moral to the bones. I mean, that, this is the word of God. I, I, I can look at that as, as saying, hey, you won't get arthritis. Amen. I mean, if it shall be health, it shall be health to thy navel and moral to thy bones. That's God's way. And I could take that as, as meaning arthritis. But definitely it does mean he will give you rest and peace. And, he, and you will be under control. You won't be nervous, depressed. I mean, all this bad stuff with coming with worrying. The Lord is our health. If we keep our eyes on him, the Lord is, is our health. Verse 9. Honor the Lord with thy substance and with thy first, first fruits of all thy increase. So shall thy barns be filled with plenty, and thy presses shall burst out with new wine. Just like it says in Malachi, tithe and see and watch the blessings just come upon you. We have a hard time with that because we think it's too good. That's too good to be true. So we don't accept it. Verse 11. My son, they despise not the chastening of the Lord, chastening of the Lord, Neither be weary of his correction. He's saying, don't get mad with him when he's trying to correct you. The Lord has corrected me I don't know how many times. He's chastised me many times. And guess what? Believe it or not, I have to say thank you. I have to say thank you, Lord. Thank you for showing me that this was wrong. Thank you by showing me this, I can be a better Christian. Because you have chastised me. You took me to the woodshed. You gave me a spanking. And now I can be a better person. Mm -hmm. So it says right here. It says. Despise not. Despise not his correction. When the Lord corrects you. We should say thank you Lord. Thank you for showing me I was wrong. On whatever it was. Right. Verse 12. For whom the Lord loveth he correcteth. Even as a father. The son in whom he delighteth. I, I mean, if you love your child, what are you going to do? And it's hard to spank them. I mean, when people say, this is going to hurt me more than you, I know they don't believe us. But it's true. I mean, it's hard for me to spank my daughter or my grandkids. And I say spank, and people are going to say, oh, ooh, you better not use that word, spank. Well, guess what? If God said I can do it, I'm going to do it. And there's no law that's going to stop me. <laughs> I'm doing God's instructions. Yep. But, but, but what I'm showing here... He spanks us because He loves us. He corrects us because He loves us. In Hebrews 12, 5, And you have forgotten the extortion, extortation which speaketh unto you as unto children. My son, despise not thou the chastening of the Lord, nor faint when thou art rebuked of Him. I have to say amen to that. Because if the Lord didn't chastise us, if He didn't correct us, how are we going to grow? Because we're going to make mistakes, believe me. Yeah. We're still in these sinful bodies. Our nature is to sin. Because we were born in a sin nature. We were born by two sinners. Adam and Eve. So when you're born by two sinners, you are a sinner. So God needs to, to correct us. Because it's, it's in our nature to do wrong. I mean, like I said before, babies. What's, what's the first two words they learn? Just like that. It's either no or mine. Selfishness. So we're born to be sinners. So when God corrects us, amen. That's all I can say is just say amen because it's good for us. One of the reasons for God not healing is that we're going to die. We're going to die. We live in these kind of bodies and they weren't made to live forever since the fall of man, since Adam and Eve uh, messed up because in Hebrews chapter 9 verse 27 it says and as it is appointed unto men once to die so we're going to die so the Lord I mean if if you think well God should heal them because they're a Christian plus we're Christians and they should be healed well what every time they get sick we're going to ask that they get healed and just keep on and keep on well they're never going to die if that's the way we think 
But God right here says, hey, there's a point for every one of us wants to die. Except if the rapture comes in our time, <laughs> amen. Because what? We're not going to die. We're going to go from these bodies straight with the Lord. We're not going to hit the grave. you got Christians who are, their bodies are in the grave. I'm not going to get into that teaching either way because it'll take me time. But uh, we won't go into the grave. We'll go straight to be with the Lord. Mm -hmm. Amen. Now, be careful when you're listening to someone, like I said. They may be using scriptures to show you how name it and claim it. The name it and claim it is the word of God. And we've got many preachers who use this name it and claim it. Let me give you, let me give you an example. In Mark 11, starting with verse 12, I'm just going to tell you this. Jesus says he was hungry. He sees a fig tree, and it had, it had leaves but no figs on it. Now, you, you can read this later, but it's in Mark uh, chapter 12. He goes to the fig tree, but there's no figs on it, but there's leaves. So he cursed it. Okay? So then in verses 15 through 19, he goes into the temple and clears out all the money changers from the temple because at that time, that's the house of God at that time. So he does all that. And then back then in verse 20 and 22, he goes back to the fig tree. And you wonder, well, why is he picking, pointing out the fig tree so much in this, teach, in this chapter? He's pointing to the fig tree quite a bit. Be at the beginning he points to it then he goes into the temple and clears it out then he comes back to the fig tree again and it's because he's using this as an illustration this fig tree he's using it as an illustration of Israel of Israel the fig tree represents spiritually dead Israel spiritually they're dead I mean you just need to read the Bible and just see how many times they made their own gods and just totally went against the will of God so many times the temple is still there like the leaves on the tree, the temple's still there, but there's no righteousness. What did he just have to do? They were using his temple to make money. The temple's just like there's no fruit on the tree. The temple had no righteousness, so that's just like the fig tree having leaves, the temple, but there was no figs. There were no fruits. There were no righteousness. You understand what I'm saying? God cursed Israel, destroying both the nation and its religion. Because they had not produced any spiritual fruit even to this day. Even to this day. And that's because they did not receive Jesus Christ as the Son of God. As the Messiah. Then in verse 22 it says, And Jesus answering said unto them, Have faith in God. For verily I say unto you, That whoever shall say unto the, this mountain, Be thou removed, and be cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he saith. Now what Jesus was saying here is that, that we have great power available for us through faith in him. Okay? We have we have the power through Jesus. And I don't, I'm, I'm scared to use the word faith, but it's, it's not our faith. Remember, the faith that we have, whatever faith you have, is from the Lord. So even if it's your, even you're saying, my faith, no, it's not your faith. God gave you the faith. It's His faith. Yeah. Okay? But we have power through that, with that, to move mountains. And it's not actually talking about mountains. But there's things in our life that are as big as mountains to us. That's how big they seem to be. But if through the, with the faith of God, we can move those mountains. Amen? Amen. At the last supper, Jesus said to the twelve disciples in, in John chapter 14, verses 13 and 14, And whatsoever ye shall ask in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If ye shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. Now, this is one of those verses. When he said, Whatsoever ye shall ask in my name, what he is saying is when you're asking in the name of Jesus, that's what it says, it is according to his purpose and will, not ours. That's why he says if you ask anything in my name, in his name, if it's in his name, then you're asking for that his will, not our will. I will do it. People get confused here. When you're asking, it's got to be in the will of the Father. And if it's in the will of the Father, 
He will do it if it's in God's will. A lot of us, that's where we lose it. We ask things, but we're not asking for God's glory or for His will. We're asking for our will. And that's not what the Lord meant here. He didn't say, ask your will, and I would do it. He said, in my name. If you're doing it in His name, then it's in His will. He wasn't speaking about faith in your own, in your own dreams or ideals of what you think it should be. That's not the way we ask. That's not the way we should think. When we're asking, we're asking in God's will. That if it's His will. James 4.3 You ask and receive not because you ask amiss that you may consume it upon your lust. James is warning us that we shouldn't ask with wrong motives so we can get our own pleasures out of it. That's what he's saying. It plainly tells us how to do it <clears throat> in 1 John chapter 5, verse 14. And this is the confidence that we have in Him that if we ask anything according to His will, I think people, I think these preachers, I think they forget this is in there. I'm going to read it one more time. And this is the confidence that we have in Him that if we ask anything, if we ask anything according to His will, He hears us. Ain't that what it says? It didn't say to our will, what we want. It says, according to His will, He will hear us. So mountain moving faith is not our will, but His. So the Father can be glorified in the Son. When God commands or when God's commands are obeyed, He will honor the obedience that we have. When we obey the Lord, He will honor that. And when we ask anything in faith according to His will, he will provide. You know, when you're walking in the Spirit, what does walking in the Spirit mean? You're walking the way the Lord wants you to walk. So you're doing His will while you're walking in the Spirit. Now, a person who's not walking in the Spirit, they're not asking in God's will. They're asking in their own will. Well, this is what I want. We, we need to be very careful there. The believer who wants what God wants can ask God and receive. That's what it says. The believer who wants what God wants, that's when God answers their prayer. Isaiah 45, 11, Thus saith the Lord, the Holy One of Israel and His Maker, ask me of things to come concerning my sons and concerning the work of my hands, command you me. Now this was a little, hard, a little bit hard to understand in the King James. I'm going to read it in the Living Bible. This makes it easier to understand what I just read. The Living Bible translated it, and it's, and it's a good translation. This is what the Lord says, the Holy One of Israel and your Creator. Do you question what I do for my children? Do you give me orders about the work of my hands? Huh? This verse is, people need to read this verse. They get mad at God when He doesn't answer their prayer. He said, who are you to question me? I created everything. Who are you to create to, to question me? That makes me nervous to read that. <laughs> <laughs> really? Instead of questioning, we should just humble ourselves and ask for His will for His children. Mm -hmm. So if somebody's sick, we pray, Lord, let your will be done. I know my will, Lord, I pray for this person to get healed. I pray for that. But I want your will to be done. We should never put our will in front of God's will. Remember that. Galatians 1.1, 1, 1, it says, Paul, I'll give you an example. Paul, an apostle, not of men, neither by men, but, but by Jesus Christ and, the God, and God the Father who raised him from the dead. Paul wasn't, a, wasn't nominated by a group of people, what it says, or by a group of persons or a person. He was picked by God because that's what God wanted. We do things the wrong way most of the time. Now listen, this is the way we do things. And it's the wrong way. And I'm going to give you an example in the Bible. In Acts chapter, chapter 1, verses 21 through 26, I'm just going to tell you what it says. But you can write it down and you can go there and read it later. The apostles got together to see who, who they would get to replace Judas. Because they had 12 disciples, right? Well, now there's just 11 because of what Judas did. And so, the, so they got together to pick, they picked two men. They picked, did you hear me? The apostles, they picked two men 
And then they went to God and said, Lord, pick one of them. Is that the way we do things? We, we, we choose what we want, what we want, and then we tell God, okay, which one of these do you want us to have or not have or do or not do? That's not the way it's done. God, God didn't want neither one of them. God wanted neither one of them. Because who, who did he pick? In Galatians 1.1, 1, 1, who did he? It said Paul. Paul was picked by God. These, these apostles, they didn't, Paul wasn't one of the men they said. They bought, uh, forgive me, I think it was Barnabas and Matthews. I think those were two men. <laughs> and, uh, and, and, and the apostles said, pick one of these two to be the next disciple. That's, that's man's way. That's what I'm saying. We, <laughs> God's way is better. He picked, he said, no. They picked one. They voted for one of them, but, Paul, but God was wanting Paul the whole time. Yeah. And he did get them. Right here it shows. I picked them. These men couldn't pick them because they said, they gave me a choice. These men lost, they weren't lost, but you know what I'm talking about. Man. man <laughs> told me to pick one of these two that they picked. That's what it was like. But God said, no, no. Paul's the one I want. Paul was picked by God. Same thing in the promised land. The, the Lord took Israel out of Egypt to take them to the promised land. They get to the promised land, they send spies into the promised land. The spies, they see giant, giants in the land. So the, the spies come back, and out of, I think it was 12 spies, I think, out of 12, two of them said, Joshua and Caleb, they said, uh, that's the promised land. The Lord already said we can have it. We should go and take it. But the rest of them said, there's giants there. We can't take this. Right. And, the, and Israel sided with those other ones. Israel decided, no, we're not going to do it God's way. Because there's giants in the land, we can't do it. They did not have faith in God. God said, this is yours, this is, I'm giving you this land. But they voted and said, no, we can't take it. And if they would have done it God's way, it would have been the right way. Right. But they did it man's way. And what happened to them? They stayed in the wilderness for another 40 years for disobeying God. So we need, we need to learn how to put God's words first and believe them. We need to learn how to pray. And in Matthew 6.10, it plainly says, Matthew 6.10, the Lord's Prayer, verse 10, it says, Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Thy will be done. God is saying, when we pray, we pray for God's will. Pray for God. He didn't say pray for our own will. Now, like I said, well, we can pray for something we would like or want to happen. But make sure at the end of our prayer we say, but let your will be done, Lord. This is what I want. But more than that, I want your will to be done. And that's the way we should pray. When people are sick, we shouldn't tell them, oh, you're going to be better or it's going to be okay. Unless God tells us to say that. When I pray for someone who's sick, I don't say them words. Unless God tells me you're going to be okay, I'm not going to tell this person they're going to be okay because I don't know that God's going to go ahead and take them home. Right. So I can't say that to that person. But when we pray for them, we need to pray, Lord, let your will be done. And if we do that, and if we're born again Christians, it will be an amen to, to that no matter which way God does it. If He heals them, amen. If He heals them by taking them home, amen. <laughs> There's a lot of amens in there. <laughs> but that's when God's will is done. Right. When God's will is done. We as Christians, we need to understand that we're not going to understand why He doesn't heal and sometimes He does. Now I've given you this teaching. There's a quite a bit of teaching here. I went through a lot of scriptures and showed a lot of different kind of healings and I showed a lot of not healings. So it, God is God. Remember that God is God. Let his will be done, and we should just say amen and accept it.